Hi, uh, my name is Sanas Putuhi. Uh, I'm a writer and a filmmaker and an academic. Uh, today I'd like to talk about my book, uh, Love, Marriage in Kabul, a memoir. So this book actually is about the process of the making of documentaries in Afghanistan. So to give you a little bit of a backstory, when I was uh, in my early 20s, my dad used to work in Afghanistan. So he, my dad used to be a banker and he got posted to different countries. And one of the last countries that he got posted to was Afghanistan. And he got posted to Afghanistan in the early 2000s, which is just after the Taliban had left. So the Taliban left. And then uh, I think a year or less than a year later, the Afghan government wanted to establish a new bank. So they called my father who was a banker in Iran and they said we're making this joint bank between Iran and Afghanistan and would you come and help us set it up and so consequently my dad you know he was intrigued but everybody thought it was madness you know who would want to go into Kabul right after the Taliban had left because it was really really unstable and really unsafe so every day there were suicide bombings every day there was explosions so everyone said you are crazy we don't want you to go but something in me really wanted him to go because i think i wanted um my dad to go so that i could follow him and experience afghanistan unconsciously right so i said you know what you should go and so consequently my dad based on my insistence uh, and despite everyone's rejection and objections, he decided to go to Afghanistan and set up this bank. And when he did, my then partner and I, we followed him. We said, we're going to come check out this country. So we went on two trips to Afghanistan and uh, my partner was a filmmaker. He still is a film filmmaker. Uh, and so we took a camera and some sound equipment, very basic, whatever we, we could find. And we went to Afghanistan to make a film. So we had actually, the first time we went, we just did a bit of an investigation on what are some of the interesting topics. And what we discovered is that Afghanistan is a land filled with stories. Every corner you turn, there's a story that can be expanded and it's interesting. And there's so much you can tell about the country. And because up to then the country was so closed, there was not many people who could get in and make films or tell the stories of what is going on in Afghanistan. So after much research, what we discovered was uh, an, a very horrific phenomenon, which is that women in Afghanistan had started burning themselves as a form of suicide, right? So hundreds of women had started just burning themselves as a form of suicide. And we were like, well, what is the reason for this epidemic? Because there's so many doing this. Uh, so we need to find out why. So we took our camera, just the two of us, my ex-partner and I, and we decided that we want to investigate this. So we spent about 12 days in Kabul and Herat. And what we did is we went into hospitals, we went into burn units, we went into centers for social work and talk to people on the street to understand why women were doing this. We had over 80 hours of footage and we managed to cut it down to uh, about, I think a 12 minute film. But this 12 minute film was really, really impactful and really raw because you know we went into the hospitals, we showed the women who burned themselves and there was so, it was so, it was so raw. Um, and when the film was finished, we found out that people couldn't be with it because they couldn't look at it because they would look at it and go, oh my God, that is so, like, I don't want to see this. These images are too gruesome for me. So we felt that we hadn't actually done our job because we wanted to tell the stories about Afghanistan, but people weren't interested because it was too harsh for people to watch the film. So we decided that then we want to go back and make another film, one which is softer, one which is more, uh, it touches people's heart, but it still tells the story of some, some, some story about Afghanistan. 
So three years later, with lots of research, uh, I came across a woman called Mahbuba Ravi. So Mahbuba is an Afghan Australian woman and she has long story, very long story. Her own story is very interesting, but she established a charity in Australia called Mahbuba's Promise. And through Mahbuba's promise, she has been helping hundreds of widows, hundreds of orphans in Afghanistan uh, for the last 20 years. So in the year 2009, she called us up and she said, I've got the perfect story for you guys. Are you guys interested to make, you know, follow me and make this film? So my then partner, Amin, Amin Palangi, and myself, we like, sure, you know, we've been waiting for this for a few years. So we set up our equipment and it was just the two of us. Um, we found some equipment, borrowed some equipment and headed to Afghanistan with her for one month. And the story of that was in the orphanage that she's established, there was a young man by the name of Abdul Fattah. And Abdul Fattah was one of the first boys her charity ever rescued. So he was one of the first child, children uh, she'd raised money for. And then 17 years later, this, ma this boy had turned into a um, really bright and smart young man who was supporting the orphanage in Kabul. And across the valley lived a young girl, a 15-year-old, by the name of Fatima. And Fatima's dad, one day, he just woke up and he said, my daughter is of marriageable age and I need to marry her off. So he would sit in front of her house, in, in, in his house, and want to give off his daughter to anyone who was passing by and willing to marry her. And so, you know, we knew the fate of people like that because a lot of the women that we had interviewed in the previous film who had burned themselves were the results of this kind of marriages, this kind of nonsensical acts of really young girls getting married to really old men. And so when Mahbuba's promise found out about what Fatima's dad is doing, they're like, well, we, we need to save this girl. So they approached him and they said, look, how about you, Fatima marry Abdul Fattah because Abdul Fattah is an eligible young man and she is a beautiful young girl. So let them marry each other. And the, the father had agreed and so when we got to Kabul, we were going to film the process of the journey of their marriage. But a lot happened. Once we hit the ground, um, a lot happened. So by then, when we got to Kabul, the young couple relationship had established between them. But the father was being really difficult. He didn't, he wanted, he was asking for too many things, too much money. And then he wanted, uh, you know, so, us to either find um a wife for his son because fatima was the only girl in his house so she was doing all the domestics so he was like well if you find a wife for my son then that wife can come in and then it can she can replace fatima so that i've got somebody who can take care of the household and so anyway we went on this journey to film the process of the marriage between fatima and abdul fatah so the result of that after so we shot the film in 2009 but we actually didn't have a film until 2014 because you know we were both students back then uh he was a film student and i was doing my phd we didn't have any money you know we didn't know where to start so we came back with hours and hours and hours of footage hundreds of hours of footage and what do we do with it we need to turn it into a film so it took us a several years to then you know find an editor find a music guy find a sound guy uh and these guys helped us to eventually and get funding and the australian government gave us some funding when we uh, found an incredible producer uh so the film came out called love marriage in Kabul, and unlike that other film which hidden generation it was called which people were like oh my god i don't want to know about this people fell in love with the film because it's so touching it's really gentle but at the same time it makes you present to the realities of afghanistan for women and children so now when the film was published when the film was uh, actually like uh came out i felt that 
there's something missing here because, you know, and I've felt this all along. So, so I've already started this journey. So I was feeling that there's so much that's unsaid. There's so much that I had gone through as a woman in the process of the making of these films. So, you know, when I first went to Afghanistan, I was 24. I celebrated my 25th birthday in Kabul. And, you know, coming back, I had so much to deal with. I didn't know how to deal with seeing the woman burning and then, you know, dealing with the trauma of it. It's very traumatic, you know. Uh, and then the, the making of the second film and all the stories in between of the women and children who were never going to be seen because they were in a hard drive or they were just not part of the story. So I felt like I had been given this um, privilege. I used to say burden, but now I say it's a privilege because I really feel privileged to have had that opportunity to then tell the story of what I witnessed, the journey that I went through. Because as a woman, I had access to places in Afghanistan that if my, uh, if I mean, you know, what went by himself, he would never have had access to because he was a man. And, you know, us, Afghanistan is a very segregated country. And so, you know, just having me as a woman gave us access to the lives of women, the lives of children, and people opened up to us because of who we were, you know, because uh, we also speak um, Farsi. But Dari and Farsi are very similar in the way they are, um, they're spoken. So we also had the access of the language. And so after coming back, uh, so I had started writing this, this, what became eventually Love, Marriage and Couple, as soon as we got back uh, from Afghanistan in 2006, which is the first time we went. So I had written this 2006, but I didn't have a story because you know it was just a bunch of experiences right it wasn't interesting for people so i kept writing it rewriting it writing it rewriting it and then when we went to afghanistan again 2009 and when we came back with this story i i started rewriting it um and again there was there was not many people interested in it because you know of the way it was written because it was written like two different books because there were two different experiences the 2006 experience and the 2009 experience so i kept trying i said you know what i'm not going to give up so i kept writing it uh, rewriting it editing it and i sent it to so many publishers so many agents and i kept getting rejected and it was it almost got published, had a contract with a publisher, and there was issues, so we had to pull out the contract. So long story short, I didn't give up. I didn't, I, I persisted. And eventually, in 2019, after winning the Peter Blasey Award for memoir, um, I managed to get a book contract uh, with Gazebo Publishers, Gazebo Books in Sydney, to publish the book. And it's amazing because oh, this publisher was so aligned with the book because he, interestingly enough, uh, the, gazebo, the gazebo founders, um, Xavier and I think Tim, uh, had also published Peter Blasey's memoir, you know, and Peter Blasey is a gay, was a gay activist who has passed away. And when I told them, look, I found I won the Peter Blasey Award, we found that we were really aligned in um, you know, our mission. And so from 2006 to 2020, I just persisted. And then just this year, the book Love, Marriage and Kabul was published.